Good day, two peas. Our topic today is linear systems, and we're at the start of a new unit. Our goal by the end of this lesson, I hope you can say, I know what it means to solve a system of equations and how to do this by graphing. So we're going to talk now about linear systems, but we're going to start with making sure we understand exactly what is a solution. Well, in the last unit, you learned that it, what it meant to solve a linear equation, and it means to find the value of a variable that will make an equation true. There was only ever one uh, solution to our equations before. So for something like this, 5x plus eight, 3 equals 18, we know how to solve this, but I'm not going to ask you to solve it. All I'd want to know uh, is the answer to this question. Is the solution to the equation given 2 or 3? Now, you don't have to solve it to know that. All you really have to do is see does 2 or 3 make this equation work? Well, 5 times 2 plus 3 is 10 plus 3, which is not 18. That doesn't work. Uh, so 5 times 3 plus 3 is 15 plus 3, which is in fact 18. That one works. So the solution to that equation I gave you was 3. Now there's only one solution. There's no other value of x that I can plug into that equation that will make 5x plus 3 equal to 18. There's only that one. Uh, but what if I asked you this? What is the solution to this equation? There's both an x and a y, and x and y are different things. We plug in different numbers to x and y. But you should recognize that we've actually dealt with things like that before. That's a line. And we found a whole bunch of points on a line, and every point was a value of x and a value of y that made this equation true. So when we played with lines, we found as many points as we wanted to, and when we graphed them on our grid, what we were doing was giving a representation of the solution to this equation, because it doesn't have just one solution. It has a whole bunch of them. It has an infinite number of solutions. And so we had to plot them on a graph to show what they were because how else are you going to represent infinity? Well, you just put arrows on the end and let it go off as far as it wants to. So we're going to practice graphing this one again because you need to be able to graph in this unit. So if we do 2x plus 3y equals 6, we're going to uh, refresh our memory on how to graph this. First of all, we need it in y equals mx plus b form. So the very last thing you did in the last unit was rearranging into y equals mx plus b form to identify what the slope is and what the intercept is. Well, we're going to do this here, and that means we have to get the x, or sorry, the y completely by itself. So I have to get that y by itself. In the first place, this 2x is stopping us from having that y by itself, so I've got to get rid of that. So I'm going to take it away, but if I take it away on one side, I have to take it away on the other. So now what I have is 3y on this side equals 6 minus 2x. And now to get y by itself, y has a 3 attached to it, and that 3 is multiplying the y. And the way you get rid of something that's multiplying is you divide. So I divide that by 3, but if I divide that by 3, i got to divide that side by 3 as well. When I divide this by 3, I just get y. When I divide this side by 3, I have to divide everything there by 3. So 6 divided by 3 is 2. And then 2 divided by 3, we're going to leave that as 2 thirds x. Now remember, to identify slope and y-intercept, slope is the thing with the x. x isn't included, but it's the thing with the x. And the y-intercept is the thing by itself. And of course, we used m and b. Don't ask me why we use m and b. M and b. But we know the slope is negative two-thirds, and the y-intercept is two. Now, when we graphed that before, we said, OK, I'm going to graph the y-intercept first. I know it goes through that point. And then the slope is negative two-thirds. So that means, since it's negative, remember we talked about rise over run? The top was the rise, which told us how far up and down we had to go. 
and the three is the run which told us how far to the right we had to go so this says we have to go down to since it's a negative we have to go down to one two and forward one two three and that's where we're going to put our point so now there's our line and every single point on that line will make that equation true so i'm going to draw the line on here and i want to make sure that it's a good one there we go yeah that's even better okay so there's our line and let's put our arrowheads at the end of that line so that we know that that line goes off to infinity now if i want to find some nice points on this line other than the two that i used to graph it all of these points that it goes through well, and even not the nice points, all of these points here are points that make my equation true. I'm going to demonstrate that to you. Here's a point right here, and if we take a look, that's the point negative 3, positive 4. That will make my equation true because 2 times negative 3, and remember our original equation said 2x plus 3y has to equal 6. So 2 times negative 3 plus 3 times 12 is negative 6, oh, sorry, 3 times 4, which is 12. Negative 6 plus 12 is actually 6. So that's what I wanted. I wanted it to be 6. That's what that said. Okay. So each of these points on here, all of the points on that line, every single one of them, whether it's a nice point or not, makes that equation true. Okay. So a system of linear equations is another way of saying a pair of lines. Now we have two equations. And the solution to a system is a fancy way of saying a point, 1x and 1y, that is in both equations. So what I have here is actually a system of equations. I have a system of lines. I don't actually have the equation for these lines. We could get it if we wanted to. But um, I want you to, to look really hard at it and say, OK, well, which point on this uh, graph is actually on both lines? And hopefully you can see that there's only one point on this graph that's on both lines, right there, where they cross. So to find the solution, you need to graph the lines and see where they cross. And then I know that both of those will work, or that, that point, and in this case, that's the point 2, comma 1 for x's and y's. That's the point that will work in both my equations. So we're going to do one where I do know the values, and I'm going to have to graph to find out what the solution is. So here in example one, it says find the solution to the following system of equations. Well, we've got to graph them first, so I have to rearrange into slope y-intercept form because neither of these are in slope y-intercept form. This one's going to be easy though because I have to get the y by itself and the only thing that's stopping y from being by itself is this positive 2x so I need to subtract 2x on both sides and then I have y equals negative 5 minus 2x and so I'll plot that on there I have to go to negative 5 1 2 3 4 5 because that's my y-intercept the y-intercept, and the slope is negative 2. And remember, the slope is negative 2, but that's over 1, so that we get our rise and our run. Now, I don't actually have room on here. I have to go down 2, which is going to put me down here, and forward 1. So I got kind of that line there. But maybe I can follow the pattern backwards. Instead of going down two and over one, I can go backwards two and up one. So that I'm along the same, same slope. And I can follow my pattern backwards instead of going forwards. So there's the line I have. Let's draw on that line um, in blue. That looks pretty good. 
And let's put our arrowheads at the end to show that that goes off to infinity. There's an infinite number of points on there. So now let's do the next one. This one here is a little bit harder to get into slope y-intercept form. I have to get the y term by itself. And the easiest way to get this y term by itself is to make it show up on this side that's already empty. So I'm going to add 3y to both sides. And this side becomes 2x plus 9 equals 3y. And now to... Um, to get y completely by itself, I have to divide by both sides by 3. If I divide both sides by 3, I get 2 over 3x plus 3 equals y. And now again, I've got my rise and my run. My rise and my run. And then this is the y-intercept. So my y-intercept is 3, and then I have to rise 2 and run 3. And I can follow that backwards if I want, and I think I just found the intersection point. But let's draw on our line anyway. And we'll do that one in red. And again, that one goes off to infinity too, so let's put some points, some arrows on the end. So now my solution here is this point right there. That's where they cross. That will make both equations true. Uh, and so that is negative 3 in the x direction and 1 in the y direction if I'm taking a look at where that thing is on the grid. Now, we need to check that to see if it's right. We want to check to see if it actually does make our equation true. So I found that it was negative 3... 1. Well, I'm going to check it. And here's how I'm going to check it. Now, you have to be careful to keep the left side and the right side uh, separate. You're not solving an equation. You're not moving back and forth across the equal sign. We're checking to see if the left side, uh, when I plug in negative 3 for x and 1 for y, does that make my equation true? So on the left side of this equation, I have y plus 2x. And we found that the y was 1 and that the x was negative 3. So now that's 1, subtract 6, that is in fact negative 5. And negative 5 was on my right side. So what I say is, yippee yahoo, my left side equals my right side. That point definitely works in that equation. It makes that equation true. Now on the other side, my left side, I've got everything on the left side here. I have 2x minus 3y plus 9. And again, I found out that my x is negative 3. I found out my y is 1. And now 2 times negative 3, right here, is negative 6. And negative 3 times 1 is negative 3, and then I have plus 9, and while well, negative 6 minus 3 is negative 9 plus 9, makes this side 0, which is great because that's what was on my left side, or sorry, my right side. My right side is 0 as well, so my left side equals the right side, which means that this works in both equations. So I found the one value of x and the one value of y that makes both of these equations true. Because there's an infinite number of them that make the equations true, this is the only one that will make them both true because it is where the two lines crossed. And that is it for this video.